Good day, everyone. Today, I'm going to share with you a very deep secret, something I have been researching and studying and focusing on for at least a year now, and I haven't felt right about releasing it until now. Uh, it is very deep, and I feel like it could go on and on dimensionally and shift and change, but I have found a way to condense our human experience into four layers but i believe this is really going to help anyone no matter where you're at or your walk um, on a soul level and in today's day and age we need some really freaking good news there's a lot of bad stuff going on and it keeps getting worse it's really easy to be hopeless and feel like you don't have control of your thoughts and your life and what happens to you but this uh, graph that I'm about to share with you is really going to help you with that. So let's jump right in. There's four layers. People could argue, you know, there's dimension after dimension after dimension. There's millions of dimensions. I'm, I'm sure there are, but there has to be a place where you can simplify things um, in a way where you can live this day to day. And this impacts your Monday through Friday, your weekend. And that's what I've done here. So I have four layers, as you can see, um, they all have to do with you as an individual. Um, the first layer, uh, the second layer, the third, the fourth, they all sort of go hand in hand with each other, creating you as a person, as a spirit, as a soul, and your experience with the world around you. I'm just gonna dive right in. The first layer is the most relatable, I would say. It's the outer layer as you see it doesn't actually have to do with you it's a layer around you it's um the outer layer i call it the hey layer hey is the fifth letter in the hebrew aleph bay it's the alphabet i honor the hebrew letters and i have found so much purpose in honoring and diving into the depths of the alive language um of hebrew so hey, I have its um, Hebrew modern written form right here, means to uh, behold or to be revealed. And it goes along with this realm. This is the electric subatomic known realm of happening taking place around you. It's what you identify with or are influenced to create a personal reality from. It's the realm of laws and all scientific fundamentals take place here. It can be influenced by all the other layers, the other three, and it's mainly observed in space time. This layer bears witness to happenings in the fourth layer, and we'll get into that later. So the outer layer is what you're seeing right now. When you look at me, right, you see the light behind me, you see um, you know, my actions, you hear my voice, everything's being projected outward into this space, right? Space, time, the air, oxygen, whatever you want to call it, right? That is the outer layer. Now, we, it's really cool as humans have the ability, everyone does, to project out into this outer layer, right? Um, they actually say your aura, as they talk about, like a frequency you give off goes at least six feet out of your body. And that's why when you get close to people, you can sort of either feel intimidated or, um, you know, they, they, the closer they get, there's that intimacy bond that grows. It's because there's things exchanging in this realm. I've done research on a group of scientists who took upon themselves to see if human intent and thought could affect the world around them. And I'm sure you've heard stories of the plants people spoke over, they flourished and then they cursed them and they diminished. Well, they, these scientists actually found a way to get human intention to raise the pH of water, and it worked. Um, that's what's happening all day around us, and that's probably why, you know, you are feeling things when you're out in public or different things are giving you different emotions. It's because there is a trade, there's an exchange going on. So all of um, the elements and happenings going on, right, the light shining through, I consider that the outer layer. I say what you identify with or are influenced by because, of course, it's affected by sight, taste, see, smell. It's going to, you know, what you watch or what you do is going to impact who you are on a soul level. All the scientific fundamentals take place here, right? Um, atoms, molecules, so on and so forth. Um, it can be influenced by other layers, just like the raising of the pH. Um, it's mainly observed in space time. So, right, you and me are sort of having a day to day experience in the world. The sun comes up, it goes down. It is um, in space time. And um, I'll get into the fourth layer later. 
The second layer here, uh, the bayit layer, bayit means uh, floor plans or a home, basically, in Hebrew. And I call it the body layer. That is you, me right here, right? My body, basically. It's very simple. It's the actions you release from inner layers. They are all displaced in this layer, defining physical you. Cause and effect is the primary functioning here. It's also currently measured in space-time. And this layer is greatly affected by the first, of course, and the third layer. So uh, the body layer, it's exceptionally important. This is you. I mean, you are wrapped in flesh. You have, you know, everything you've been given to have an experience. It's a gift. God created us in his likeness. So the body is very important. This is you, right, on a, on a fundamental level. This is what everyone else is seeing and experiencing with you. And what you release is all displaced out of this body. Now, if you take the soul and the spirit and the mind out of the body, it's a, it's a beast, man. It's, it's a mechanism, basically. It's flesh and blood without the other two layers, the third and the fourth, which is all about the soul and the mind. You're just, you're basically just existing. I can, I could call it the beast, man. It's when you have no, um, you're not operating in any functioning or gift of the two other soul and mind layers. You're just existing as a body. And I feel like people get to that level when they have denied the greatness God put upon them for so long, or they have, um, been so used to just, you know, uh, survive mode, survive, eat, me, 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 what do I want? Serve the body. They become slaves to the body. That's the beast nature of man. That's man not awakened. That's man basically just in survival mode. And that is a place where it's easy to get locked into if you live in fear, which produces anger or feeling like a victim in your life. You are reduced more to an eating machine where you're not actually exhibiting any kind of greatness into the earth, into the first layer for people to have an experience or yourself. The third layer is the tet layer. Uh, tet in the Hebrew Aleph Bayit, it basically means a basket. Now, um, I think that greatly sim symbolizes this realm. This is the, the heart layer, the soul starts the soul realm. It's the unconscious mind, the first layer in the soul realm that dictates the operation of the second layer and the fourth layer. It is the realm of feelings, the place of thought and change where sympathetic, nervous, fight or flight, beast man is activated and rarely bypassed. It is reactive to, but outside of space time. So this is you, this is your emotions. This is where you feel your anger or you feel love or you feel pleasure. This is, this is the place of thought. So when you wake up in the morning, your first thought is like coffee or oh great, you're operating in this third layer, the basket. This is what holds your heart, your emotions, your feelings. Now, um, of course, this is greatly affected by the body, how other people are using their bodies or how you're using yours, and then the realm outside, the first layer as well. This is basically the, um, the heart, your heart. It's where everything, they say, you know, out of an abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? The heart is deceitful and wicked above all things, right? Who can know it? Basically, the heart is where most people just stay at. It's where you just live in your feelings and your feelings tell you how to use your body. And then that affects your atmosphere around you and the people who know you. Most people stay in these first three layers. Now, um, the fourth layer very is very conducive to the third. I call this the het or ket layer. Ket means a, like a, a wall, a dividing, a, a place of division that separates an outside from an inside. Basically, the spirit layer. This is now the spirit. Conscious mind. It's a multidimensional being layer, also known as the spirit realm. Second layer in the soul realm. It's the God breath self, the place of co-creating outside of space time. There's possible dimensional travel and experience, and it's only designed to be operated by being a recognized spirit being. Now to break this down and simplify it, um, in the church, right? 
it's taught to receive Jesus in your heart, you know, and the Holy Spirit and all that. And he comes into your soul and, you know, you take on his mind and all that. This is that l- that layer of exchange. This is where, you know, people teach like in meditation, open yourself. This is the opening of the self layer. This is where most people don't take the practice or time to go into this fourth layer. They basically just stay in the beast first three levels, right? And that makes up the rest of their world. This is the level that you must step into if you want to find who you really are. You know, as a believer, it says we are seated in heavenly places. It says as Christ is, so are we in the earth. And my, a lot of my argument for why I'm not a typical Christian in the sense of like, I believe we're just meant to save the lost when we get saved from hell and all that. Um, I believe we're meant to come alive and turn the kingdom of this earth into the kingdoms of our God. And if you look around and you're seeing the brokenness in the world and you're wondering, who am I? Most of the time, you're going to be tempted to just settle into the familiar, the comfortable. Most people will work their eight hour shift if they know they can binge watch Netflix and eat ice cream at night and have their little bit of pleasure. They'll trade all that time to just make it through to get to a place where they feel good. But if you have something crying out inside of you, it's coming from this layer. This is the realm that connects us to heaven. This is the, um, you know, people call this the mind, right? Open your mind. The mind, it's connected to everyone and dimensions. And it is. But it's created, I say, to be a recognized spirit being is because I have countless friends and experiences from the past that did involve drug use and things like that where you can open yourself up and have experiences in the outer dimensions. And usually that results in heavy demonic activity. When you open yourself up out of the right seat, you will not be recognized. There's a verse in the Bible where um, a group of men come after these demons in the scriptures and they come after them, you know, like, oh, we know who we are, you know, we're gonna cast you out of these people. And the demons turn and look at these guys and go like, You know, Paul, we know, but who are you? Like, who do you think you are? And it says the demons stripped these guys naked and sent them running for their mamas. So they overpowered them. And the demons making that claim of like, Paul, we know, Jesus, we know, but who are you? It shows that in the, in the dimensions of heaven and in these realms, there is authority. Of course there is. I mean, you can't have the earth without authority. Everything would be total chaos. So there's authority in the spiritual realm. And if you don't know who you are and you are not, you haven't actually risen to be seated and you reign in peace and you reign in righteousness and authority in Christ, you are open to basically being overpowered and or it coming into the physical realm and affecting you. But this is very serious. And I feel like If you can walk around in your day seeing these four separate layers, realizing you're multidimensional, right? It starts with this fourth layer. It starts with the with the het layer, the division in outside and in inside. You have to be seated in a place where you are comfortable with who you are. That's why, you know, I don't I never hang my hat on teaching like, oh, sin, sin, sin. I feel like everybody knows what sin is and what's wrong in their heart. I don't parade that like my job is to get people to just, the answer is just to destroy your sin. Christ already did that. But sin is a trading of reaping death. It says the wages of sin is death. That has nothing to do with God. That's your choice and your authority on earth. If you are not um, growing in the spiritual, if you're not walking in, as Christ said, the spiritual gifts, that he gave us, you're going to have a really jacked up experience in your other realms. And if you live in chaos and you're depressed, especially anxiety, and I find, man, this generation of mine, that's why I'm just speaking openly now. I'm not trying to make this all polished and pretty. People need answers and you need um, to be able to grab hold of, of, of things of order to be able to live more holy an WH, whole, wholesomely, that you can find peace and joy. If you have anxiety, anxiety basically translates to like phasing, to not being stable, 
being anxious means like you don't have anything stable to hold on to. And I am sharing this with you because in Christ, there is stability. In Christ, there is faith and trust. And I know a lot of churches and things have really jacked up what this faith walk is out of good intention. But there is a change coming where you're going to be hearing things like this, where you are multidimensional. You're not made just to, you know, read the Bible and go to church and then work your Monday through Friday. We are meant to turn the kingdoms of this world into the kingdoms of our God and his Christ. And we are like Christ still on the earth. Christ did all the work. You're going to hear that a thousand times from me. Christ did all the work on the cross. It's finished. But we have the authority to walk this out and to change who we are. This is all you have. This is all you have. And don't let your experiences in the first layer tell you who you are. And then you change your body, you change your emotions and how you release things. You must be careful what you let in and what you let out. So in this fourth layer, it greatly affects on a scientific level, the first layer, right? Like the people's intentions and thoughts directed at water, changing its pH, how much greater are our thoughts if they're negative or evil? So in this mind layer, it starts here. It goes to the heart layer. That's where you find peace. That's where you start to master um, the, your, your anxious thoughts, your anger, your unforgiveness, and you start to heal here. Seated from a place in the fourth, you move to the body layer. You start to change how you look and how you operate. And then that starts to move into the realm around you, the six feet, this the atomic level of happening where you're actually releasing an energy and a frequency from the heavenly realms that starts to change nature around you. Romans 8 says that creation is groaning for the sons to be made manifest. It's groaning and travailing. And my heart is that you would be able to, to realize that you are called to be a son. And I say a son, of course it's a daughter, but I'm just looping it together. You're called to be a son and a daughter of a kingdom where you find who you're meant to be. It is not about a rule book and about you just making God happy. God, as God can control his emotions, you know, I think he's okay. He's a lot bigger than we think, but his cry is for us to be able to know who we are because he loves us so much and he has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. In that verse, godliness is a little g. It literally is saying you are like God, godliness. We are called to walk in a form of godliness and that will require a level of knowledge. It says my people perish for lack of knowledge. I actually have some scriptures to go along with it. We might as well dive into some of them. Um, I'll just put this up here. Um, in the first realm, right? You have the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and govern it, reign over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky and the animals. See, we have authority over the air, that first layer. Uh, this is about Peter walking on the water, right? He controlled the frequencies of the water to walk on them by thought, Elizabeth, this is really cool. Luke 1, 4, 1, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. This is when Mary became impregnated with Yeshua. She went to visit her aunt, Elizabeth. And when Mary just said hello from afar, her baby, who was John the Baptist, Elizabeth, jumped with joy by hearing the sound and the closeness of Yeshua in her womb. So two babies recognized each other. And it said that Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is a time before Christ even died. And, you know, a lot of people argue the Holy Spirit wasn't here yet. Well, apparently it was. And that baby filled his mother with the Holy Spirit because of his exclamation of joy in recognizing the Christ, um, you know, 20 feet away. Isaiah 11, 6, 9, the wolf shall live with the, the wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. This is showing you that there's a level to reach. This isn't about heaven. This is about the new earth. There's a level to reach where the carnivorous uh, animals are at peace 
with the non-carnivorous animals. There's a, there's a level in the air when the suns are revealed where everything comes into alignment and peace. Uh, this is about the body level. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. He created them, male and female. You formed me in my innermost being, shaped my delicate insides and my intricate outside and wove them together in my mother's womb. No one abuses his own body, but pampers it, serving and satisfying its needs. That's exactly what Christ does for his church. He serves and satisfies us as members of his body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Right there, your physical body, the second layer, is a temple, the fourth layer of the Holy Spirit, who you have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with that second layer. Matthew 6, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. What you see affects the two other soul realm layers. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. And then the light within you is darkness. How great is that darkness? It's a good warning right there. All right, this is the third soul level. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And remember, Yahweh created, Elohim created the heavens and the earth out of frequency, out of his heart and his desire for the earth, the beauty of wanting to co-create and have sons and daughters. So you are doing the same thing. And thou shalt love the Lord your God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Create in me a pure heart, God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the second layer right here, the fourth realm. This is the last one. It says, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Right there, you have that reversal I was talking about. He may strengthen you with power through his spirit out of that realm in your inner being so that he may dwell in your heart through faith. Faith is the key also in that fourth realm. Everything you do must be a trade of faith in that fourth realm. That's why you, you, you have to know who you are, right? And who you have faith in. The earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the spirit of Yahweh was hovering over the face of the waters. For all who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. If you're led from that fourth realm, by God, you're a son of God. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. That flesh realm, that beast man, that second and third right, that level you can stay on, that's where you have to overcome and move to the fourth so that you can please God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father, so you receive a spirit from that realm, right? When you believe through faith, and it's not the spirit of slavery. It's not the spirit of, of pleasing God. You'll want to please God when you see how good he is, but you're not meant to fall back in fear. You have a spirit of adoption. That means you belong in a certain realm to the Father's heart while you're here on earth. Romans eight fourteen, our last one, someone I'm acquainted with who is in union with Christ was swept away 14 years ago in an ecstatic experience. He was taken into the third heaven, but I'm not sure if he was in his body or out of his body, only God knows. And I know that this man was caught up in an ecstatic experience and brought into paradise, where he overheard many wondrous and inexpressible secrets that were so sacred that no mortal is permitted to repeat them. This was a normal guy. This is Paul talking about a normal guy that he knows in Romans. And you don't hear this verse talked about very much, but basically you have the ability to dimensionally travel into these spiritual realms. 
to see and taste bits of heaven, to sit at the table like Moses on Mount Sinai and eat with Yahweh. Because this isn't about surviving earth until the rapture. This is about being mature enough to sit at a table with Yahweh that we're invited to, seated in Christ at the right hand, and hear his heart and legislate and, and become like him from the heavenly realm. There's no one like you. God made us so special. And I hope that you'll move past the first three layers of just letting whatever the system of Babylon, the earth, the politics, all this bull crap, trying to weaken you and make you a consumer who dies fat and on pharmaceuticals. I hope you rise above that and realize there's so much for your life set, but you have to be mature enough to dive and go beyond what you're just being fed every day through your cell phone and through the people around you. And I hope you will pioneer that. And I hope these four layers really help you and give you a starting point for becoming an awakened, spiritual, amazing son or daughter of Yahweh Elohim. Thank you for watching this.